Welcome, folks, to Fishing Planet. I'm Super Dave, and for everybody new to the game, this is the Beginner's Guide. Uh, one thing to note, I don't ever mention this in videos, but if you go ahead and subscribe since you are new to the game, it would be a big help, especially if you're going to need help down the road in the game. I have playlists for every lake, even with over 1,500 videos and on Fishing Planet. <laughs> I definitely am the most active Fishing Planet content creator there is currently. It will take you a little bit to get used to navigating all these menus, especially if you're on console. If you're on PC, it won't be too bad at all. Uh, but the first thing you're actually going to want to do is go to your settings here, guys. There is a bunch of things you can do with your settings. There's a few that you probably definitely want to go ahead and do. With your language, obviously that's self-explanatory, but you have units, you can do either the imperial system, so inches and feet and pounds, or metric, which is your meters, uh, kilograms, etc. And one thing you're going to definitely want to change is your tackle load indicator. You're going to want to put that to pro. Um, I will explain probably a little bit more down the uh, in the later in the video what this is for. Uh, or show it to you, but essentially you're going to want to see what your rod, line, and reel are doing instead of just having it all together. Uh, that way you can know if you have something wrong with your setup. Bobber size, you're going to want to have big. Also, um, if you want, you can disable the landing net. And in audio, one big thing, you can copy the settings that I do have but make sure that you have your fish a bite sound. What that will do is if you are using a bobber to float fish, it will give you a ding sound when fish are interested in swimming up to it. Now, a lot of the gear you will get will be self-explanatory, like your vest is where you hold tackle, rod stand is where you can use more than one pole at one time, uh, your fish keep net is where you keep it, your boat, and kayak uh, are pretty self-explanatory when you get to the lake and your tackle box and rod stand however you have a few types of storage you have the storage that is on you which is called backpack and you have the storage that is at home so if you go to your lake the stuff that you want in with you into your lake you want to make sure uh, when you go to that waterway that you have it in your backpack uh, your home storage isn't accessible at the lake, but it is a good spot to save certain tackle gear or baits that you aren't currently using. Also, there is templates right here to set up your poles really quickly if you want to, and you can check your licenses over here. Now, over here you can see I have a rod case that holds seven poles, so... If you look at the top, you'll see number one is green. That is this pole, my first slot, and this pole is set up properly. Every pole is going to need a, a rod, a, a reel, and line. Now, certain poles are bottom rods, certain poles are float poles, and certain poles are on lure only. You do have to keep that in mind. So if you do have a setup that is not working for you, and it won't, uh, for example, let you equip a bait to it. That's probably because it's a lure pole or vice versa. Also on the right hand side, you can see the items are grayed out as this is a lure pole. That means the grayed out items are not compatible with the current setup that you have highlighted. Also, if you see it's green, it is perfectly ready to go. If you see that it is red, that means it is the pole is there, but it is missing something. For example, this one is missing a lure, and you can see it turned green. Um, white means there is nothing in that slot, so you, you don't have anything equipped there. And a very, uh, very important to mention this, the controls, even for the different menus, are down at the bottom, folks. So that was one thing that I a little bit struggled with in the beginning, uh, and I was trying to go too quick, and you can just kind of uh, go down to the bottom and pay attention to if you get stuck on something. Now, for the sake of help, helping you set up poles, you have to understand 
essentially there is three different functioning pull sets. Uh, some of these fall in the same category. For example, uh, spinning and casting rods, we'll go look at right now. They, uh, you have a rod, a reel, and line, um, but they have a spot for a lure. And also this slot right here is for titanium leader if you're fishing a fish that has teeth or big teeth. Uh, this slot here, when you do unequip it, as you can see here, that slot right there is for extra things, including uh, soft baits that you could put on a lure. Some lures have an extra slot for that. Also, I want to note here, this was a little bit confusing for me when I started. The jig heads are actually part of the lure deal, and uh, you can do that. And when you put a jig head on, you need one of the jig baits, or what most people would call a soft bait behind it to use it. Now, we'll go back to the shop. The telescopic in match are your float poles, poles that you use a bobber with. So when you set them up, you have a pole, a reel, a line, and some sort of bobber. Again, if it has teeth, you can use a titanium leader. Otherwise, you don't need that. And then you use a terminal tackle hook. Uh, Barbless giving you more XP if you do uh, looking for that. I believe it's 20 to 25% of extra XP. I highly recommend that when you're new, when you get the opportunity, and then a bait of some sort. Uh, so if you can see here, we'll just put on a hook, and you can see that pole is now green. So if you do have something wrong, uh, if you think you have it right, uh, but it's red up there. That means you're missing. So if you have it right, uh, it will change green. That number that the pole is in will change green. Also, one thing to note, too, before I go on, before I forget, is on your float poles, uh, your bob ones that require a bobber, you'll see uh, this right here. This is the amount of line that is uh, below your bobber. So essentially, the depth that you're fishing in, it'll either be in inches or in centimeters, whatever uh, uh, measurement system you are using. Now, for these other rods, uh, for the feeder, bottom, and carp rods, these essentially functionally act the same as like a normal bottom rod. So with a bottom rod, it is very similar to a float pole, except for you need a leader of some sort, a sinker, and this is where your hook goes and your bait. Now, you can see it went green and there's still an empty slot. That is for, uh, if you look right here, uh, we'll go right to, uh, you could actually put on the, I uh, believe, the bells. <laughs> I don't use them so because they're obnoxious <laughs> and they're loud. But you could also put a bell on some of these setups. Now, for setting up the poles, one thing to know as well is you do want to set them up around similar sizes. So, for example, my pole, my line weight is up to 46. Again, on my braid, it is 46. And my reel is 47. So that will help you set up a balance pole that will wear out relatively evenly. Also, with the pole, you can see what your lure weight is, and that is the weight of the lures that you can put on it. So, for example, this is a one-ounce bass jig. That will work perfectly on here because this is lure weight three-quarters to two-and-a-half ounces. That actually does work with the bottom rods as well. As you can see on the bottom rods, it will tell you what the casting weight is, and very similar with all poles, you do want to set them up equally. Uh, the heavier the sinker you use on the bottom rods, generally the farther out you'll be able to cast with them. Also, when you're buying poles, as you can see, we're in the spinning setup. Uh, you can figure out what reel you'll need by the uh, four squares over there. I'll put my handy-dandy blue arrow up for you guys. Uh, the left top one is spinning. The right one is a casting reel. 
Uh, so whether you're using a spinning set, a spinning rod, or for example, even a bottom rod, it will let you know what type of a reel it needs. The two bottom ones, the left one is for uh, if it's a bobber pole. So if we put up match, you'll see that it shows that it's a bobber one. If it is a lure one, uh, for example, we can go to casting. You can see that requires a casting reel and a lure. It's for lures. So if you go to your reels, you can pick between spin and casting. Uh, casting reels will only be actually used on casting rods. For the most part, you'll be buying spinning reels. Also, on that note, when making purchases, you want to make sure you're at your global store and not within a lake. A lot of times, the lakes have less uh, items available, and they are more expensive. So make sure you plan out your trips, including your license, and always buy an advanced license to wherever you're going. I would never recommend buying the unlimited license until very late in the game. You want to use your bait coins for other things. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And make sure you have your travel costs covered. So you need the price of your license and the travel costs to go somewhere. And make sure you stay there for a little bit. Also, with the shop thing, on that same note, while staying there a little bit, you're probably going to think poles are the most important thing to upgrade. They're actually not. Your keep net or stringer, so whatever you keep your fish in, is actually the most important thing, and that is the thing I would upgrade most. Early on, a stringer like these two are going to be cheaper to maintain and the cheaper price in comparison to a keep net, but uh, keep nets have the bonus of allowing you to put a fish back and keep another one. The reason these are so important to upgrade these first is if you go somewhere, you can only fill up one of these bags in a day. Uh, so instead of leaving the lake when you're done filling this up, just go ahead and advance to the next day. Uh, if you're on PlayStation, that's square. Um, but you can go to 5 o'clock. That is where every day starts. But you want to make sure you get your money's worth while you're there. And when you do that, uh, you want to make sure you have a, a big enough keep net or stringer for that. But at the same time, make sure that the keep net that you are using uh, is a big enough upgrade. For example, 20 to 22, or 20, we could go look at an example here. Uh, for example, 44 and 220 pounds to 44 and 264 really isn't that big of an upgrade. So make sure it is worth your upgrade. Also, you'll notice in the shop there is stuff for bait coins outside of barbless gear. Uh, so if you go into here, um, we'll go into uh, tackle. Outside of barbless gear, I wouldn't spend bait coins. I would save them for your markers on your map, and I will show you that later in the video. Um, but uh, for the most part, you would save your bait coins for barbless gear and uh, some of the certain lures like the barbless jig heads. Barbless in general is going to help you out quite a bit when you're new with the bonus to the XP. But you'll see in here on baits, uh, do not go, um, don't buy large minnows with bait coins because in a few levels you will be able to buy them with the normal in-game cash now on the opposite side of the spectrum i see most people probably waste their money on boats uh even though this is a twenty thousand dollar kayak or this was the one i would prefer if you're going to get a kayak this will actually do the exact same thing and give you the same access as this four hundred thousand dollar boat so i would not upgrade your boat or kayak uh, if you have one, that will work well enough until you have a surplus of money later game. Now, as I said, you never want to buy the basic license, and you don't want to ever buy it for bait coins. One thing to note on here, guys, is when buying your license, this time right here is based on real lifetime, not in-game time. So if you buy an advanced Texas license for one day, it will be 20 out four hours from when you bought it. And on the right hand side of the screen next to the advanced fishing license it'll tell you when it expires 
Also, when planning for a lake as well, you can see on, for example, let's look at Lone Star Lake. You can check the fish species out, and it will tell you what lure or bait that is most likely going to work, so you know to have it in your th your uh, key or in your backpack before you go. You do not want to leave uh, when you get to somewhere. You want to stay there for a while uh, to make your money back on the trip and make some extra money. Also, it will show you weather patterns as well. And in the fish species, you can see there is a circle. Uh, if you catch the fish at that lake in that, uh, whether it's a trophy, young, common, or unique, it will put a check mark in there if you have caught it. Uh, one thing to note too is when you're buying your uh, travel cost, only buy one day when you're there. It will automatically add days for you when you advance if that's what you choose to do. Now at the lake, you can choose different places to spawn around the lake. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there is a chat down here that if you want, you can use it. There is uh, buttons to tell you which is what. Um, and uh, a few things too here, guys. You can advance time. As a rule of thumb, you see these fish peaks. As you can see, the weather also at the main page, as I talked about earlier, the weather patterns. As a general rule of thumb, the higher the peak, generally the better the fish. That's a better the fish bite. That is not always the case, but when you're starting out, that will help you out quite a bit. You can advance time by pulling up your fast forward menu on PlayStation. It is X. I'm sure if you ask in the comments, our amazing computer community will add, know what it is for computer or um, Xbox. And that way you could go ahead and uh, advance forward time to whatever time you decide you want to fish. Just keep in mind when you do that, there can be a cooldown before you can do that again. Um, Knights do not have that cooldown currently in the game. So when you're looking at your screen, the top left is your what day of the trip you're on with what time of the day it is. Your water temperature, the weather, the barometric pressure and the water temperature. Below that is your keep net or stringer and how much you can put in it. And the one below that is the biggest fish you can put in there. Um, on the right hand top corner, that is what lures or lure that you are currently using. Um, and also bait, because if you're using a bait pole, which you will do quite a bit when you're new, you will be using that. Now, as you see, when I cast it out, uh, I have a stop and go um, feature. That is the lure that you're using in the water. If you have bait, you won't have that. Um, but uh, don't worry too much about using uh, getting three dots on stop and go or whatever retrieve that you're using. I have a video for retrieves in that whole beginner or in that whole beginner's guides list. So I definitely highly recommend that checking that out because I won't be able to go and do a two depth of everything in this. Otherwise it would be a five hour video. With that being said, you can see them bars on the right hand of my screen. The first one is line. Uh, the, the second one is um, your pole and your third one is the reel. That when them bars, if we catch a fish here really quick, That'll go up, and that all that means is the amount of stress that you're putting on. You generally don't want them to max out. Uh, you, the pole or whatever maxes out will wear out. And this is why I had you guys switch to your pro settings. So that way you can see which part of your fishing setup is taking the most stress. Also below that, the percentages is the amount of wear. Um, as you can see here, this is a pretty big pole for what we're using. Um, but down below, you can see the feet on your line. Also, um, on the circle, the, the sections that are filled up on the outside is your drag. That is how much power you're, you, you're getting out of your reel. You can turn that up or down depending on uh, the stress on your pole. And the uh, two little arrows in the middle of that circle is actually what speed on the fishing pole or on the reel that you're using because you can make them reel in quicker. Um, as you can see on the screen, you can see this is pretty self-explanatory. The only one that isn't self-explanatory on here 
is that little fish icon. That is your club points if you are in a club room and in a club, which uh, if you choose to, I highly recommend early. You can join clubs. There is a ton out there to go ahead and join. Uh, there, I have a video about clubs because that's a whole nother thing in itself, but it will give you bonus XP and a currency to buy Club Series gear, which is a very good gear in the game. Also, on this menu too, as you can see, I'm getting the three arrows of red. That means I am getting penalized for using too big of a pole for a small fish. This won't be super important, but you can, if you want, go up and look at your tackle modifier. So you can see it's penalizing me 8 XP for using too big of uh, equipment uh, for this fish. So you do want to use the right equipment for the right fish. Also on this menu, if you do, or after you catch a fish, if you want, you could place a marker on PlayStation. It is triangle to pull up your map. So if you, uh, I, I'm like I said, I'm sure our community will help in the comments for the other controls. Uh, but for example, if we wanted to place a mark for that fish we just caught there, you can see we place it there. Now you can also type in the thing. So we can say we used uh, stop and go for it just so we can remember next time when we were here. And you can see on that marker, it'll tell you the size, what type of fish it was, when you caught it, and what lure you caught it. So when we go out now, you can see there's a new marker right there. That's where we caught it. Now also you can put manual markers in as well. And I do this a lot. For example, if I was trying to fish in this deep spot, I put a mark right here in the deep part of the lake. And you can see now we have that deep marker right out there. Uh, markers are one of the most important things to uh, actually go ahead and uh, use your bait coins on. It helps you remember stuff for a long time. For example, right now, currently in the game, you can have 1,700 markers. Uh, and you can see I have 1,500 of them used up. So you can see I use them quite a bit. And where you get them is when you're in the shop, uh, they actually will be in uh, the services part. But I would recommend doing that when you're at the main menu. Um, as you can see, I can't buy any more, but you definitely can buy them uh, with your bait coins in large quantities, and that will help you out quite a bit. One thing worth mentioning, too, is I would not worry about trying to level up instantly. Enjoy the game. Everybody, I think when they first start, worries too much about power leveling. And as you can see, the lakes unlock at certain levels. Um, and I would do them in order, guys. And I know that sounds crazy, and you would probably want to rush to one of the bigger lakes. But there are tons of missions at each lake that help you out. Uh, for example, at Lone Star, there's missions that give you bobber and gear and money and bait coins. I would do that, and if you do do them, you won't need to power level or money grind. You will just naturally progress progress in the game and enjoy yourself quite a bit. And then there is a lot of missions to do, and they're a lot of fun to do. Also, too, on my homepage, if you have any more questions about other things of guides, there's a whole beginner's guides for if you're starting out. There's a whole beginner series for spinning retrieves, uh, where and how to catch fish, uh, etc. Also on the home part of my YouTube channel for you guys is the fish by location playlist. So if you're going to Lone Star, I have a Lone Star playlist that has all the missions, how to catch all the different types of fish. And good ways to make money at that lake if you choose to do that. And that's right on there. Otherwise, there's amazing content creators out there that aren't me too. Just so that you guys check out. There's a lot of good information out on this game if you're looking for it. With that being said, folks, hopefully this helps you out. And hopefully you have a wonder time with this game. I will see you next time, folks. Have a good one.